Hey everybody, I am super excited because this is episode 43 and if you want to learn to nail and scale your marketing and grow your business in starting off small but building out into something really big, you're going to want to tune in all the way through, but first cue that intro. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Milia. I'm your host, Matt Milia. And in this podcast, we'll talk about the real, raw, uncut business success secrets you won't find anywhere else. Follow my journey from entry level to CEO. We discuss real actionable items you can plug into your business right away. To subscribe to our weekly top tips, you can go to www.mattpodcast.com and join our community of elite high-level performers. And if you're interested in our inside sales company, you can go to www.appointmentstoday.com to jump on a free strategy call. And now, stay tuned for our podcast. Hey, Tim, it is great to meet you. Thank you for jumping on and uh, appreciate you being here. And for everyone who doesn't know about you, feel free to tell us a little bit about yourself. Cool. Well, thanks for having me, Matt. I'm super excited. So uh, I love these conversations. Uh, so, uh, you know, just a little bit about me, uh, you know, my entrepreneurial journey. Uh, you know, I wasn't that entrepreneur that was, you know, selling base car baseball cards when I was eight, you know, and trying to make money early on. I didn't really think all that much about it until I got out of college. And uh, when I graduated from college, I ended up getting involved in a wholesale distribution company, became a partner in that company. And, and we grew that company for about 10 years. We grew about 60% a year. And then we sold it. Um, amazing experience. You know, I was, feel very fortunate that I was involved in that. I learned a ton. You know, I tell people that I learned more in six months doing that than I did in four years of college. You know, it was just a, it was like a real world MBA, right? Right. And so, uh, yeah, it was a great experience from there. I actually got involved in real estate. I was a real estate agent for about three, three and a half years. Realized I really did not enjoy being in that business. It's a great business for some. It was not sure. a great fit for me. And, uh, and at that point, I shifted gears and, and started what I'm doing now, which is, you know, marketing for, for small businesses, entrepreneurs, you know, helping them eliminate the confusion of marketing, which is quite common, and just helping them put in place a plan so that they can grow. It's awesome. It's yeah. funny, too, that, that you said the real estate side of things. I, I, find, I mean, I'm an agent as well, but I find myself in a situation where I become more of a marketer and less of a, uh, you know, less working on, uh, you know, a strategy. It's more of the marketing strategy, really digging deep there, finding out the nuances, the ins and outs and what needs to be done to drive traffic. So, yeah. which is what you do. You're with, is it, it's Rialto. I am, yeah, I'm Rialto marketing. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So what are some things, I mean, for someone who, which by the way, for everybody that's watching as well, I do want to make sure that I put this up here. Uh, actually, he was, Tim was so nice to share this. Uh, and it's, it's an amazing site. There's actually, I was literally looking at it right before we jumped on. There's a lot of really, <laughs> there's a lot of really good insightful little takeaways but if someone's just starting to build, you know, build a brand, try to build their organization, maybe put their self, put themselves out there, what would you say is the, uh, you know, the, the keys to some successful traits of a marketer and some yep. things that they should be doing when they get started? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, and so I think what makes us different is our focus on the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I always recommend people start with the marketing fundamentals. You know, I always talk about a, there was a quote from Michael Jordan where he said, get the fundamentals down and the level of everything you do will rise. What happens with a lot of people, business owners, when they start marketing is they jump into tactics immediately. I, I've got to be on Facebook. I've got to have a website, you know, or I've got to start doing YouTube videos, whatever it may be. They jump immediately into that. And the problem with that is you're building a house without a foundation. The marketing fundamentals, they're the same today as they were 50 years ago, and they're going to be the same 50 years from now. The fundamentals in any discipline, they do not change. Most people skip the marketing fundamentals because, they, look, Matt, they're not cool. 
They're not sexy. You know, people right. just want to jump in and do, let's just do SEO. Let's just start driving traffic. That's great. But if you drive traffic to a website that has lousy messaging, you don't have good, clear calls to action. It's not going to work. You may convert some, but you're basically going to be flushing money down the toilet. So whether you're just starting out or frankly, I mean, we work with businesses that have been in business for years. They've skipped something. Something's not working. They've reached a plateau and they need to break through that. We always come back to the fundamentals to make sure that they have nailed those first. Then from there, you can start to look at, okay, what am I actually going to do to market my business? But so the, here's, here's the way I look at the fundamentals of marketing. I like to call it the marketing strategy trilogy. One, you got to know who your target market is. Okay. Who are you trying to reach? Who are you going to do business with? The second is your messaging. You know, you've got to have clear, engaging messaging that is easy for people to understand. And then the third part of that is you got to have a plan. What, what am I going to focus on for the next 90 days of my marketing? Keep me focused so I don't get distracted. It's very easy to get distracted with all the noise that there is in marketing. You know, when I was in the distribution business, we had a website, which was basically an informational, you know, online brochure. And we did training for our clients to help them grow their business, stay in front of them. And that's how we grew our business. Today, I, there's so many different marketing channels. Most people just get overwhelmed by those. And when they don't have a plan and they see somebody pitching the latest marketing tactic, they chase it like a squirrel chasing a nut, right? And yep. it, that's just, you're always going to have these starts and stops and you're never really going to gain momentum doing that. So that's why I always say you got to start with those fundamentals and then you can build from there. So funny. Oh, sorry, yeah. go no, go ahead, please. Hey, I would say it's, it's funny, though, that you say that because so many people want to chase those shiny objects. They're going after the, uh, you know, hey, let, and let me look at, you know, this ad set or let me look at going to Google or YouTube or LinkedIn. And what I have found as well, without ch chasing those shiny objects, building a bot's another one I've seen a lot of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's just build a bot and the bot does everything. It, it doesn't work that way. I've learned that the hard way. Yeah, but uh, there's only so much you can do with that. But what in your position with where you're at within your company, what was it that even got you into, you know, you said you didn't like real estate because it was, you know, it wasn't what you're passionate about, which is, you know, again, I everybody has, you got to follow and pursue that passion. What was okay. it that made you passionate about getting into that marketing side of things? I well, based on my experience in the distribution business, we were really we were working with the same clients over and over again because we were selling wholesale, mm -hmm. and our whole approach was just to help them grow their business. You know, and so I knew what it was like to market. I knew what it was like to run a business, and I, you know, I loved seeing clients grow. You know, and so I was like, look, I'm, I'm just going to get involved in, in marketing. It's dynamic, which I love. It's changing all the time. Now, the oh, fundamentals yeah. aren't changing, but the tactics are changing and evolving all the time. And I love that. It keeps me on my toes and it keeps me interested. And so that's why I originally, you know, got into it, what attracted me to it. Um, you know, and then we just chose to focus on that, that niche of you got to have the fundamentals in place first. And right. then we can help you execute the rest of it, but you can't skip the fundamentals. It's just not, it doesn't work. Couple, a couple of years ago too. It's funny that you say that because what I did is I actually took, you were saying that some of it's always changing. It's constantly evolving. It's going from here to there. There's always something that's happening. And we went from, I literally had in a marketing company, these guys were amazing. Uh, they were generating, and I could say this now looking back because at the time I'm like, oh, this isn't working and right. these things, you know, because again, I didn't know what to expect. I, and success leaves clues. Yes. And one of the things that I had found was that as I started going through all their stuff, I start looking through everything and I'm really tuning in and saying, okay, wow, their marketing strategy, it worked. It was spot on. We were getting leads. We were getting an average of two to three appointments every day with a very small market spend, we were spending maybe a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. And I mean, we were getting, and it was a conversion campaign. So they were literally running it to get conversions. So yeah. there were higher quality leads. And I was talking to them, we were getting sales and I'm thinking, you know what? 
we shut it off because over the long period of time, some just dips, ebbs and flows, normal areas of business. We shut things, you know, shut that part of it down because we're like, you know what, there's got to be a better way, an easier way we can do this, bring it in house. Took a couple years to figure that out. Yeah. What we, <laughs> but, but what we found, what we found was that I took those same ads from a couple of years ago, said, I'm going to run these. They fell so flat on their face. I got yeah. barely any results. And I was shocked because I literally took a copy plug and play of what their model was and what they had set out for us, not even close to the same results. So you're so right when it when you talk about that constant change. So yeah. with Rialto, I mean, what would you say are probably some of the, I mean, and again, if you don't mind sharing, I mean, what are some of the challenges and bottlenecks that you guys find that you have with clients when they first get started with, with uh, marketing efforts? I, the biggest one, and I was talking to somebody about this this morning, is getting people to really buy into investing in the fundamentals first. Right. There are so many people that come to marketing companies and go, they got a fire under them and they're like, I need to generate leads tomorrow. You know, let's just start running paid ads, you know, run Google ads, run Facebook ads and getting them to take a step back and really understand, look, this is our approach. This is why we approach things this way. You need to, one, marketing is an investment. It's not an expense. If you view it as an expense, you'll cut it. If you view it as an investment, it's something that you put money into each and every month. It is not a light switch that you can just flip on and off. So it is a long-term thing. Getting people to buy into, I need to invest in the fundamentals. I need to take the time to do this right now even when I have a fire under me, I have to do that first. And then I've got to be committed to this and invest in it consistently. Too many people are in it for quick leads. Their expectations are unrealistic. And no. a lot of marketing companies just don't, they don't set that expectation. Right. You know, they overpromise and under deliver because they didn't right. set the client expectation right in the beginning. And so you know, we lose business because of that. I know it. Oh, yeah. But I'm okay with that because I don't want to work with somebody that is not willing to at least do the foundational work first. Because guess what? In the long run, everything else we do after that is going to be so much better. They're going to get better results and then they're going to be happy and they're going to refer us. If they want us yep. to just start doing something, inevitably, they're going to reach a point where they're not going to be happy and who gets blamed for that? Not them. It's me, right? Yeah. In my company. Yeah. And I don't want that. So I would say for us, that's the biggest hurdle is here's our approach. Here's why I need you to buy into this if we're going to be a good fit. The the funny thing is too, and yeah, the fundamentals are so important. You have to start with a good foundation. That couldn't be, that's so true. And yeah. It's, it's funny because the faster that someone wants to move, like I even know from our company, when I talk with someone, if they're in a massive hurry where, hey, we got to get calling, we got to get people making dials right away, call my leads, uh, I want to start yesterday, and they just signed the contract, those are usually people I say, hey, you know what, this, this probably won't work out, and we should go separate, because it is a process, it takes time, and you know they might not see what's happening on the outside because they don't see us working directly on their campaign, but that's what we're doing behind the scenes. And we, even for us, for ads, people that are already running ads that are they're given to us, yeah, it's still the same process because we have to make sure our guys are trained up, make sure our guys know the ins and outs. We know the objectives. We know the objections that are going to come in because, and we also know that everyone that we're talking to is going to be is going to be motivated and want to do business with them. So for yeah. big time marketing question here, and I'm going to use a real life example, and I, I put you on the spot a little bit, That's but it okay. sounds like That's you, got, okay. you got this thing dialed in. I'm a roofer, which I'm not, but I'm just using this as an example. Okay. I have a roofing company and I have really good word of mouth, but I have very little market presence. No one knows who I am in terms of outside of my referral network, yeah. how would I, how would you proceed with someone who wants to get into 
growing their business through marketing, but yeah. like where would they start? Where would that roofing company start? You know, from a found from a from a tactical standpoint, okay, so let's assume that they've got those fundamentals in place. Mm -hmm. Right? They've got good mess, which by the way, most contractors say the same damn thing. I can go to five roofing companies in Denver where I'm based out of, and I guarantee you three or four out of the five say the same thing. You know, we're the number Denver. one roofing company in Denver. <laughs> Okay, that's not telling me anything. So, you know, that messaging, who their t ideal clients are, they got to have that in place. But then mm -hmm. from there, you know, what typically makes the most sense? One, your website is the most important marketing asset you have after the fundamentals. Everything that you do from a marketing standpoint, whether it's offline or online, is driving people back to your website. So that's the first place we'd start. Do they have strong elements on their website that communicate, you know, what they do, the problems that they solve? Do they have a clear call to action, right? How many websites do you go to? There's no, there's no phone number that's easy to find. They're not telling you what they want you to do. And we need to lead people down the path that we want them to take. So, you know, in our business, it's when somebody comes to our website, it's get a free consultation. That's the direct call to action for a roofer. It's probably get a quote, right? Or, you know, get a proposal, something like that. Or maybe it's a, a free inspection of some kind, right? But it's something like that. That call to action needs to be all over the place on that website, especially on the homepage, right? So you got to get that website first because everything else that we do from a tactical standpoint is driving people back there. And if that asset is not performing like it should, everything else you do down line is not going to work as well as it should. So that's the first thing that I do after the fundamentals. The second thing that I would start to do as well is start to look at some of those basic local search engine optimization elements. The biggest one, Google My Business. Do they have a Google My Business page set up? It's freaking free. Okay, it's not difficult, it's free. That needs to be set up, it needs to be optimized. And then if you do not have, if they do not have some type of system in place to consistently ask for reviews and make it easy for people to leave reviews, they need to put that system in place. Because whenever somebody, one, your reviews impact your local SEO ranking along with your Google My Business page, we all make big time buying decisions based on reviews. So if I'm searching for a local roofer and I see the, you know, I see the map pack, right? There's three people in that map search near the top of the page. I don't know about you. Those three people, I'm looking at how many reviews they have. How, okay. They've got the most reviews. Bam. I click on them. I go to their website. What do I see? Do I like it? Do I not? I might check out their social pages. Are they active on social? What are they doing? What are their reviews like there? Cool. I'm comfortable. I'm going to call. Now, so somebody, the reviews, I mean, the They're reviews huge. is so funny because I just had a conversation with someone about this and it's, it's interesting because I have a couple places I'm running similar ad sets, yet one is performing so well. And the other one is just, it's doing okay. It's starting to get a lot more traction, but they have very few reviews. And one of the things I noticed that's the biggest game changer, and this is a, for everyone that's watching, it doesn't matter if you are in real estate, mortgage, uh, nope. roofing, solar. I mean, we can go on. It doesn't matter. Nope. It is video reviews, in my opinion, are probably the strongest elements of, of, the business out there. I don't know if you agree with that, but that's something I found that people that have a lot of video reviews, they don't even have to be, the less polished they are, it usually seems they perform better. That's yes. what I've noticed. As crazy as that sounds, someone literally taking out their cell phone, shooting the video saying, hey, I've just worked with Gina Smith. Check out what Gina has to say about the work and then put, you know, put the camera on Gina. They're great. They did a great job. These are the guys. Hire them. They're, you're good to go. Yeah. But so many people are afraid to do it and get on that camera. Have you noticed that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look, I agree with you 100%. Matt, it's video. Video is very strong, especially with what we're dealing with now with this pandemic. Video sure. is a great way to connect with people. 
Video reviews, I think, are certainly better than written. But I would tell anybody that needs to build up a stable of reviews, start with written because it's easier. And, you know, for, look, people don't, aren't leaving video reviews on Google, you know. Um, get the, just put a system in place, you know, especially if you, have a, if you have a high volume business where you're dealing with a lot of customers every month, just make it easy. Make it as part of your process. You know, I finish a job and somewhere in my system, whether it's text or email, they're, they're getting some outreach communication that says, hey, thanks so much for working with us. It means a lot to us and it helps other potential customers if you leave us a review. All you have to do is click this link. Bam, that link goes right to your Google My Business page where they can just leave the review. You know, or some, what people will do sometimes is create a landing page where they can link to multiple sites and, and that way they give people just the capability to make a choice. Hey, I wanna leave a review on Facebook or Google or whatever it is. The bottom line is you have to ask consistently. You have to make it easy for them to do it. If you do that, over time, your reviews will continue to build up. You know, we had a we had a client for a while that was a, they were a retail client, and so they had they were doing a lot of volume, and they when we started with them they had about thirty Google reviews, and in a matter of six months, they had about one hundred and twenty five one hundred and thirty reviews on Google. They had more reviews than any of their competitors within that time period, and just it was not a very competitive niche, but the working on their reviews, making sure their Google My Business page was set up, and then helping them with their directory and citation listings, getting those dialed in. With just that, in that particular niche, they were in that map pack and the organic search results within six months. Um, wow. So it was, you know, it's not, I don't wanna say that it's gonna be that way for everybody, but man, if you look at it in most industries, it doesn't take that many reviews to be really competitive and people make choices based on that. And you're, so you're losing business and you don't even know it. So true. So and that's something, that's something even I look at like, cause we have a lot of clients that absolutely love what we've, that what we're doing, what we've done. Uh, yet I forget that, Hey, I should, it's a good time to ask for a review. So it's, right. just, it's something that just totally goes right over my head. And it's funny because when a lot of my friends will invite me to business pages, if I know them and I've seen their work, they'll leave them a review. And they don't even ask yeah. me for it. I'm like, Hey, you know what? I'm gonna leave them a review. I even tell them like, Hey, if you want to shoot a video for you and uh, you know, do a review, I can do that too. So, because I know that that makes such a world of difference and it doesn't, uh, any field, anything that yep. you're in. Now I, I will ask you this, if you see a bunch of really good reviews, but I, I mean, again, I've seen this a lot more lately. You see a ton of really good reviews. You see one or two not so good reviews. Does that draw enough of a red flag you feel for people to not want to work with that company? Or is that more of a, hey, these are real authentic reviews and you know, it, it just makes the company more authentic? What are, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I. I think it lends credibility to the rest of your reviews. Nobody's perfect. We don't expect anybody to be perfect. So when you see, you know, if I was to look at somebody that had 10 reviews and they were five stars and one of their competitors in the listings had 20 reviews and they were at 4.7, I'm going to, I'm probably going to go with the one that has more reviews in a 4.7, but there's also certain things you can do, right? That That's a huge um, roadblock that a lot of people have in requesting reviews. They're like, well, God, what if, what if it, I get bad reviews? Well, okay. Right. One, you're not perfect. Two, if you have too many bad reviews, that points to us, uh, another problem that you have in your business that you need to fix. So right. you might as well learn about that, fix it and move on. But get the, those bad reviews. You know what I tell people? respond to your reviews. That's another way to differentiate yourself from your competitors. Respond mm -hmm. to the positive ones, respond to the negative ones. You don't have to get in a pissing match online. Just say, hey, right. you know what? I'm so sorry, we fell short. We strive to do the best we can. Please reach out to us here, take it offline, give them a number, give them an email, and we'll do our best to resolve your issue. That lends so much credibility to somebody that is thinking about doing business with you because what do we all care about? If you drop the ball, are you going to fix it? 
right? Because right. what happens with most of us is somebody drops the ball, you've already paid them, you reach out and then they're like crickets. They don't give a care. They've collected your money and they just leave you. That is so frustrating. By responding to those negative reviews, you're communicating to people, you know what, when we fall short, we do our best to take care of it. That's all people want. Take ownership. I love yeah, it. Take ownership, you know, take responsibility. We're not perfect. We all make mistakes. So yeah, I just, just stay on top of it. Respond to positive and negative reviews. There is so much you can learn from your reviews. Your, your reviews will tell you what you're doing well, why people chose to do business with you, where you fell short and where opportunities are. So there's a lot of really good business tips that you can pull from your reviews if you pay attention to them. I love it. What about, so as far as someone who has like no reviews, brand new business, I mean, I'm assuming that probably affects them too. What I always tell people is say, hey, if you have family members or friends, that can go on. And I'm not trying again to, to, uh, I don't want to put facetious or crap out there. That's right. not real views, but I want it to be like, Hey, if this person's seen your work or they've done business with you or what, or whatever the case may be that you have one at least positive review from somewhere. And then you just continuously build on it. And I've even heard of people incentivizing to give reviews like, Hey, we'll give you a Starbucks gift card. We'll do this. I mean, and just to give a review, it doesn't have to, yeah. you know, you're not saying give me a good review. Just please give me a review. We'll give you a, you know, whatever. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? So um, I have a couple of thoughts there. One, I know a lot of people do incentives for reviews. Just be careful because some of the review sites that is against their policies to do that. So ah. now will they ever find out? I don't know. Only you as a business owner can make the choice whether you want to do that. Um, second, a lot of people think about reviews and they automatically think I've got to have a past customer leave that review. In my opinion, I don't think you have to, you know, you do as a business owner, you have referral partners that you work with. You know, um, we do, we do speaking, we're doing, you know, podcast spots like this. We, if people have a good experience, we ask them to leave a review. So it doesn't, you don't always have to go back to past customers. It could just be, Hey, I have referred multiple people to Matt. Matt always takes care of him and makes me look great. Dude, that's awesome. Love right? It, I yeah. mean, you know, so just, you know, don't have them fake it. Just tell them what the experience was, what the interaction was like. That still sets the stage for what it's like to work with you and, and how you treat not only customers, but the other people that you work with and come across in your business. So don't always think it has to be a customer. You know, if you're just starting out and you haven't done any business, you know, you can certainly, you want to get those first few customers under your belt. And, you know, I think there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, you know, asking a customer for help to saying, Hey, I'd really appreciate it if you leave us a review, you know, here's why. And just, you know, most people I want to help you. So just tell them where you're at and ask them for the help. And most people are going to do it. I love it. And I didn't mean to get so hyper focused on reviews. Oh, no, I know that's cool, a man. huge it's actually one of the biggest bottlenecks that as a as an organization for us when I run when I do ads for anyone in any industry whatsoever, whether it be real estate, whether mortgage, I mean, even in the service sector, uh, one of the things that I noticed that so few people have it. So I really appreciate you diving oh, yeah. into that. No, reviews from a tactical standpoint, reviews are very low hanging fruit for most businesses. Most of them are not focusing on it enough. It is not a difficult thing. You just have to put the systems in place or have somebody else put the systems in place for you to make it happen because they're huge. We all make buying decisions based on reviews. And if you do not have them, I guarantee you, you are losing business and you don't know it. So I have a couple before we close things out, and yep. I also want to get people over to your uh, to your site as well, which guys I've been posting uh, RialtoMarketing.com. I want to do a little rapid fire with you because sure. I can tell that you've got this whole you've got this content strategy, the marketing strategy so dialed in. My question for you, first off, and when I say rapid fire, just give me a quick you know uh, yes or no to it, and then we can okay. we can break in. 
Um, so the first thing I'm going to ask you, short copy or long copy, which performs better? Or actually, see, that's not a yes or no. Uh, which, which is, pre what would you say is preferable? I lean on short, but there okay. are plenty of marketers that do great work with long copy. Okay. Landing page and website. You said website's important, yet I guarantee you there's so many people in here that are like, well, what's the difference between the two? Are they one and the same website or landing page and which one is more important or what are your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah. So your website is the most important okay. in my opinion. Landing page for those people that aren't familiar with it, a landing page really is a web page that doesn't, it doesn't have the navigation that you have on your website. It doesn't have the standard footer. A landing page is something that you use to drive people to, to take a very specific action. So we don't have that header there because we don't want to distract people. If they look at the navigation on a landing page, they're going to get distracted. So That's typically that. where you see people use landing pages, paid ads, you know, regi uh, webinar registration pages, um, things like that, where you want people to take a very specific action and you want to have good tracking because mm. you want to be able to say, Hey, we drove traffic to this landing page from Google ads. How is it performing? Okay. Is it converting? How many people are going there? That type of thing. So your website, I think is the most important because it's the hub for all your marketing, mm. but for specific marketing campaigns, you really should have landing pages set up so that you can get better conversions and better tracking. Video versus still image for uh, video. For app. Video. That's I figured out. Yeah. Okay. Facebook, YouTube, or Google, which one do you think gets the best results? Loaded question, I know. Uh, yeah, very loaded. Uh, I'm going to say Facebook, okay. but it depends on what your objectives are. So Facebook is much more top of the funnel. People don't go onto social media to buy, right? Whereas Google is much lower in the, in, the, in the customer journey because people are ready to buy. You can target high buy intent keywords, you know, like, um, you know, I don't know, uh, brown, buy brown leather shoes, okay? I'm obviously looking for brown leather shoes. You can't do that on Facebook. So Facebook typically is a lot of what I see on Facebook is people trying to add value. They're pulling people in with content, you know, download my ebook or go to my webinar and then they're selling from there and they're nurturing. So you have to be prepared to nurture with mm. Facebook. Google can be much more, you know, well, we're, we're running campaigns for service businesses, you know, so it's like a, the roofer is a perfect example. That's going to be somebody that's searching for Denver roofing company. They go to a page. It's either call or fill out the form. That's it. I'm going to piggyback on all that, which awesome insight. Lowest cost per leads that you have seen historically across all of those. Uh, uh, typically it's going to fall in, in under Facebook. Okay. Cost okay. per lead. Um, I don't do a ton of stuff on YouTube, so I'm not super familiar with YouTube, but dude, the cost per lead on uh, Google can get really expensive. Um, so yeah, Google, I usually only recommend Google for people that have a higher lifetime value customer. Got and it. So, okay. Like big ticket items. More yeah, like big ticket items. Roofers, you know, window companies, you know, or Solar. people that have people that are doing consistent business, right? So somebody like me, where somebody might be spending three, four, five thousand dollars a month in marketing. Okay, well, I can afford to pay more for per lead because I've got that not just three or four thousand dollars a month, it's ongoing for a period of time. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you're a restaurant and you have an average ticket of $15 with the profit margin of whatever, 5%. Right. You can't pay $20 a lead. hundred percent. I've seen that a lot. <laughs> I've seen people do that too. So yes. So for everyone, and thank you for playing along because I know that yeah. was really helpful for a lot of folks that are in here. And I will ask you one more thing here since we were uh, with Facebook, when you're doing your ads, I've noticed when I run ads for conversion, I get, really strong leads. But I also noticed that when I run for lead ads, which is one of the newer lead generation, and when it, yeah. because it, 
different now or they have it where it's you know because like the lead generation you got the quick fillable form that you put in there yeah what what are you seeing the most uh results with as far as as that goes and when i say the most results i should probably take a step back the most leads would you yeah. think you get more leads from lead gen or would you get more from conversion what are your thoughts Here, here's what i would tell you you need to test it because it's going to be different you know there's so many variables when you yep. when you run yep. into paid ads whether it's google or youtube or anything you can you've got to test it and see what because what works for one may may not work great for somebody else. And so, uh, you know, what I like to tell people is, you know, as a marketer, you know, we're not perfect. It's no different than your, your financial advisor. I mean, they're not perfect. They're making recommendations based on past experience, frameworks that they've used, systems that they've used that have been successful in the past. But we still need to test those with each individual client and make those small course corrections along the way. It's those small course corrections that make all the difference in the world. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people making who are running their own Google ads is they're like, they think it's like set it and forget it. And it's not at all. Right. You know, I mean, we were talking to a client the other day, their campaigns have been performing great for three or four weeks in a row. And all of a sudden things started to drop off and it's like, well, we didn't change anything. So what changed? Something with Google changed. Something with the buyers may have changed a little bit. And so we need to make some tweaks and see if we can get that back on course. That stuff happens. It's natural. So I kind of dodged that question, but I don't want somebody to automatically jump no. in and go, oh, well, you, no, I need to do this. I don't think it's that easy. I, I think you need to test because, you know, what works great for you may not work great for somebody else. There are people running ads to traffic. And again, I look at that and I'm like, traffic? But for some people it works. I mean, or engagement, which I understand engagement because you want all those likes, the social proof, and then you re then you retake that post and re-put it out there so that people can engage with it and say, oh, wow, this, man, look at this post. This guy's got like yeah. 175. So I see that, but that's, some people do that as like their main goal is, yeah. oh, let's get a bunch of people to like it. Well, likes don't put money in the bank account. No, so, that's what I was going to say, yeah. right? It, that's right. a much um, longer term play than leads. You know, yeah. so most of the stuff that we do is is really more driven towards the, with the intent of getting leads. Um, right. But, you know, I mean, marketing is a long term thing. I mean, a lot of what we do for our own businesses is, is content based. Yeah, what we're what you and I are doing right now, blog posts, you know, videos, guest podcasting, our own podcast, those do not generate immediate leads, but man, it is evergreen content that sits out there. It helps people find you long term and it helps people get to know you. People may not know anything about me, but when they sit down and they watch you and I having this conversation, they, they may go, oh gosh, you know what he has to say really resonates with me. You know, let me, I'm going to go check out some of his other stuff, you know, or it may not resonate. That's okay. You know, I'm, I can't be all things to all people, but it does yep. help people understand what we do, what I'm like, and we all do business with people we know, like, and trust. And I love the fact too that you've lived your strategy because the site that you made literally yeah. and I'm gonna give away I'm gonna give it away. I hope it's okay. I know it's but totally cool. The site that you made is literally it's getting people, it's giving them value before you ask to extract anything from them. Because so many people are out there, you know, hey, you know, buy this from me, do this, get this. Like this podcast alone, this episode, I mean I guarantee you anybody that was actually that was taking some notes, listening, or actively just, you know, minds are blown because a lot of great <laughs> stuff was shared. And yeah. I, I'm not, hey, I mean, humble, uh, you know, it's a, it's a humble boast. I think we got a real good, uh, we got a good working connection here yeah, and I people, and people see the value that's in this. And then this site that you gave that you're, you're, you've got value in there. I was reading through stuff. I mean, the funny thing is, is just even, there's so many simple things that I will just forget because I, I'm, even though I, I do consider myself a marketer, I'm an entrepreneur 
first of all, and a, a business person, but having that marketing uh, background and thinking like a marketer is, it's not always easy. And it takes so much to go in and learn all of that. So for everyone, if you don't want to learn all of that, because it is a lot to learn, yes, I've got, I've got a probably somewhere between 50 to a hundred thousand dollars in failed experiments within just the past couple of years <laughs> of learning it. And that's on the low end. Yeah. But if you, if everybody that for anybody that wants to get in touch here with Tim, I can go to realtomarketing.com. Uh, if you go to the forward slash business insights, you also get direct access to uh, the page for any of our listeners. And then do they have a way on there? I didn't get that. I didn't go too deep into it. Is there a way on there though, that when they go in, can they, if they want to book a call with a member yes. of your team or perfect. Yep. perfect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. On that she on that page, there actually is a, just a get a free consult um, link. So, oh, you got a good call to action. I like that. Yeah. I, yeah. Man, I really would have blown it if I didn't do that. Right. Um, right. Yeah. There is a get a free consult right at the top of that page as that call to action. So, but yeah, there's all kinds of free resources on there. As you pointed out, I mean, here's my viewpoint on it. I give away anything because any, all the information people need is out there. So why not help people? Yep. There are always going to be a certain number of people who either decide, I don't have time to do this. I don't have the inclination. Um, it's not the highest and best use of my time. I just need somebody else to help me with how to do this. So yeah, I'm happy to give away information and happy to help the people that get to the point where they say, I need, I need help. And I saw too that you have in there for people that are just beginning. I was looking through your site before, which I think is great because that in itself is such an untapped market because everyone's looking for these big brands, these, these big name organizations. And it's so vital to find the smaller niched groups or the people that just, they haven't done marketing yet, or they've relied solely on referrals and word yep. of mouth. Because we, we know that, I mean, just being in, in the seats that we're in, we know that as with the economy and things, everything's cyclical. So yes. you may find that one year you're killing it, the next year you're struggling, but instead of having that roller coaster up and down and ridiculous ebbs and flows of the business, why not drive some consistency? And yes. when you are getting all those referrals, support it with great marketing. Yeah, yeah, you, you have to, there are a lot of people that have built great businesses off referral. Mortgage brokers and real estate agents are a perfect example of that. But most of the time you reach a point where if you want to continue to scale and you want more consistency, you have to have other marketing channels. You know, so right. it's like building a business on referrals, like riding a unicycle. If the tire goes flat, you got a problem. If sure. you've got three or four or five different marketing channels, you know, you're riding a four wheeler. If one of the wheels goes flat, you can still move. Right. You know, right. and so I think it's really important to have multiple channels that are bringing in leads. It'll, it'll, your business will be much more consistent and, and odds are it's going to grow a lot faster. It's so true. And it's funny because every time that I've relied solely on for inside sales business, where I've just relied on influencers and uh, people that were helping drive the results, I mean, it was the most amazing time. And then, of course, you know, once things, whether they don't have anyone else to refer to you anymore, or they've already ma they've maxed out their network, they've maxed out who they're speaking with, you're now at that point where you can only ask family members and friends for business for so long. And that's yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever business you're in, mom and dad are only going to buy so many houses, sell so many houses, and right. your buddy who owns a construction <laughs> company is only going to do so, you know, he's only going to be able to do so many jobs before he's got to start relying on some marketing. So yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Well, Tim, it was awesome having you on. For everybody that's watching, again, if you go to rialtomarketing.com, uh, you can go directly from there. You can also go to our business insights that I've had it up here as well. Uh, and Tim, to, to close things out, did you have anything else that you wanted to share with anybody? Uh, any any keys to to the castle here? Man, I, I think we we covered a lot of ground. So uh, yeah. I you know I just hope people got a bunch of value from it. And if you reach a point where you you need help, you know, pop on over to our site and get a free consult over there. We have tons of content. We have blog content, we have podcast content, video content. So there's a lot of support materials there 
to help kind of indoctrinate you and, and educate you as best as possible. But uh, I've had a, it's been a pleasure talking with you, Matt, and I really appreciate the opportunity. It's been a blast. So yeah, I had a good time as well. I'm glad we got to get on here. And for everybody that's watching, tune in next week, same time, same place. It might be Wednesday next week, uh, but tune in the same time and uh, we will be, uh, we'll be going over some, uh, some leadership with uh, some amazing leaders. So again, Tim, thank you so much for jumping on thank you. and uh, see you guys all next week. Same channel, same place. Cool.